Hi, it's Kate, and this is a video reviewing exactly how to parameterize lines in three-dimensional space. Recall that when working in a single variable in the plane, the two things that we needed to determine a line were a point and its slope. Now that we're working in three-dimensional space, the two things that we need to define a line are very similar. We still need a point, but now instead of slope, we need direction. Let's take a closer look. Say we want to make the line that goes through this particular point, which we will call P0, and we want it to point in the same direction as this vector, which we'll call V. The line that goes through P0 and points in the direction of V looks something like this. I'll call it L. Now, let's take a look at the individual components that specify all of the points that lie on this line L. First, let's take a look at an arbitrary point that's on L. That just means any other point that's on L. We'll call this point P. So we have P0, the point that we know about that's on the line, and then P is any other point. And both of these particular points happen to have what are called position vectors. They're a vector that, if anchored at the origin, would say exactly how far and in the directions of which components you would need to go in order to land at these points. So P0 has a position vector that I'm going to call R0. P, similarly, has its own position vector, which I'm going to call R. Let's label again what we have exactly so far. P0 is the point we know about that is on the line. R0 is its position vector. As luck would have it, the components of the position vector for P0 are the same as the components of the point itself. It's just that P0 is a point and R0 is a vector. P is any point on the line. That's a general point, so its components are just x, y, z. Likewise, its position vector is going to have the same components as its point components. So those components will just be x, y, and z. And those are the components of r, the position vector for p. Let's take a look at the vector that goes from p0 to p. Note that this vector is parallel to the vector v, right? This vector lies along the line, and v was actually the direction vector that gave us the correct direction for this line. So saying that P0 to P, that vector, P0 P, is parallel to V, means that P0 P is a scalar multiple of V. This is a really interesting result, because using this really nice diagram, we actually found that we can construct the position vector for any point on the line by taking the position vector of the known point on the line and adding on an appropriate scalar multiple of V. Let's write that explicitly. And that's really it, actually. This is what we're saying when we parameterize a line in three-dimensional space. This scalar t is the parameter. It controls which position vector we actually end up with. Note that when t equals 0, we just have r0 all by itself, pointing straight out to p0 the known point on the line. As t begins to take on positive values, we are adding small positive scalar multiples of v onto r0, and so we are finding position vectors for points along the line like so. As t increases, we find more and more position vectors along the line. It goes on and on forever. In fact, as t increases without bound, the rest of the line on to infinity is given by these position vectors. Remember, the parameterization here is only giving us the position vectors of points that are along this line. Now, if t were allowed to assume negative values, we would be adding negative scalar multiples of v to our position vector r0, 
And so what would end up happening is we would be acquiring position vectors for points along the line to the left of P0 in this picture. As T becomes more and more negative, it's the magnitude increasing but maintaining that negative sign, we would find that this equation would give us position vectors of points along the line in the opposite direction. When we take into account all possible values of t, we are considering all of the position vectors. There are an infinite number of them of the points on this line. Let's write out this equation using components. The position vectors x, y, z of points on the line L is equal to the position vector for p naught, the point we know to be on the line, plus t, our parameter, times v, which I will give components a, b, and c. This is what's called the vector parametric equation of a line. You have the given point on the line and the direction vector. t, the scalar here, is called the parameter, and each value of t gives the position vector of a different point on the line. It can also be rewritten like this in one single vector, and sometimes you'll see each individual equality between the components here and the components here written out as three separate equations, and those are called scalar parametric equations. They look like this. These are the two major ways to write the equation of a line in three-dimensional space. It's important always to keep in mind that when you're writing the vector parametric equation of a line, what you are writing is a formula for the position vectors of the points that are on this line. We'll be using this a great deal as we move onward into parameterizing curves and surfaces as well. So take your time, really understand what's being accomplished here, and it will do you many favors in the future.